Hi everyone, welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and I'm here to talk about a few new products from Intel. Intel has recently launched a new enthusiast level platform for their processors. The platform's code name is Sandy Bridge E. The E stands for enthusiast. It corresponds with the new socket for their, their new processors. The socket is 2011 as well as a new platform controller hub within the X79 chipset that will go in the motherboards that also support these processors. So for starters, here are a couple retail box versions of these processor, and at launch we have two available. This one here is the Core i7-3930K, and the K of course stands for unlocked, so this is a fully unlocked processor ready for overclocking, and uh, as far as the frequency clock speed that this runs at, it is 3.2 gigahertz, and it has a 3.8 gigahertz turbo boost. Uh, there's a couple differences between this one here and the 3960X, so I'll just go over those really quickly. The 3960X here in the back is the Extreme Edition, so um, it's just about the best that you can get as of the filming of this video. Clock speeds for the 3960X are 3.3 gigahertz uh, standard clock speed and 3.9 gigahertz turbo boost. Uh, the L2 cache on the 3960X is 1.5 megabytes, that is 256K per core. That's the same for the 3930K. Uh, you do get a little bit more L3 cache with the 3960X. You get 15 megabytes and you get 12 megabytes for the 3930K. Both of these processors have a thermal design, po design power or thermal envelope of 130 watts. Uh, they are both fairly large processors comparative to um, more recent processors, particularly the original Sandy Bridge as well as going back to, say, the seven, Socket 775 processors. It actually is a 435 square millimeter die size. And uh, as mentioned in the intro, this is a new socket, 2011, and there are actually 2011 gold contacts on the bottom of this processor that make contact with the socket in the motherboard. Another reason this processor is so big is it has 2.27 billion transistors all right, in, right inside there in the CPU die. Now these Sandy Bridge E processors are enthusiast level processors. Both of them are six core and 12 thread processors using Intel's hyper-threading technology. Now to explain the difference between enthusiast level processors and mainstream processors, which is how Intel classifies their CPUs, we'll go back down in the history books just a few years so we can uh, specify which is which. Intel's Core i3, i5, and i7 brand, and actually started with Core i7 and the launch of the 1366 platform, and that was back in late 2008. Actually, we have a 1366 system set up right here on my left. That hung around for a while, and then they introduced, the, that was the enthusiast level, it hung around for a while, and then they introduced the mainstream version of Core i3, i3, i5, and i7 processors in, to, in early 2010. That started with the 1156 socket and Clarkdale and Linfi Linfield CPUs. In 2011, they launched Sandy Bridge, like this one right here. And Sandy Bridge was the 1155 socket. is also a mainstream platform, and that is still going strong and will soon be uh, updated with Ivy Bridge CPUs, which will also fit in the 1155 socket in early 2012. Now, going back to the enthusiast platform, the 1366 socket Nehalem CPUs have been around for just about three years now and it's finally time for the enthusiast users to get a bit of a boost. So, going back to these processors here, we have the i7-3960X 3990, and 3930K. So let's just talk about a few more bits of technology that are integrated in the Sandy Bridge E processors, and the best comparison for that is going to be the Sandy Bridge processors. Actually, both processors are developed on the same processor microprocessor architecture, that is Sandy Bridge. It is a 32 nanometer manufacturing process, and uh, essentially you get additional cores and uh, some a few additional technologies with Sandy Bridge E as well as the 32 nanometer Sandy Bridge manufacturing process that enables uh, in new instruction sets such as AVX and AESNI. And uh, you also get additional PCI Express lanes. Uh, just to give them another comparison, Nehalem and the 1366 socket when it first came out supported 36 PCI Express 2.0 lanes. Sandy Bridge supports 16 PCI Express 2.0 lanes. Sandy Bridge E, by comparison, has 40 PCI Express lanes, and those are all PCI Express 3.0 compliant, and we'll hopefully be seeing 
some PCI Express 3.0 video cards and other products coming out in 2012. The other thing that you get with the Sandy Bridge E platform is a quad channel internal memory controller. And uh, as compared to the triple channel internal memory controller that you, you got with Nehalem, you actually get up to 100% increased memory bandwidth using the quad channel memory. For more on that, let's take a look at an X79 platform motherboard. So here's an X79 motherboard from MSI, and this is the X79A GD658D. And here at the top, you can see the new 2011 socket. You can also probably tell that it is quite sizable. Just going to pop off the protective cover right there so you can see all 2011, or at least most of the 2011, contact points within the socket. Now you'll probably notice, as compared to a lot of other motherboards out there, quad channel memory presents some interesting design decisions for the motherboard itself. That quad channel memory controller that's integrated into the processor requires a lot of traces in the motherboard PCB to transmit all that data and provide all of that available bandwidth from the memory slots here and here to the processor itself. So for quad channel support, you will need to install four DDR3 DIMMs and a lot of motherboards are actually doubling it up and allowing you to install up to eight. The X79 platform and the uh, IMC in the Sandy Bridge E processor will also allow for single, dual, or triple channel, channel memory mode, but if you're an enthusiast and you're investing in this platform, you're probably gonna wanna go with a four DIMM memory kit so you can take advantage of that. Another thing to point out about this socket and the platform itself is that with DIMMs on both sides of the actual socket, and uh, the video card directly below, there's not much room left for the VRM area to supply power to the CPU. So you notice that that is up here right above the socket. And that presents some interesting cooling decisions that you might be taking into consideration if you are setting up a build based on this platform. And speaking of cooling, you may notice that these boxes for the processors themselves are noticeably thin. And that is because uh, for the first time, at least in my experience, Intel has released retail box processors that do not include a cooling solution. Again, for the enthusiast level platform, the assumption is that enthusiasts like a variety of cooling options to choose from. That doesn't mean that Intel has left you out in the cold. They have produced this uh, Intel branded standard heatsink fan. Uh, features a uh, pretty typical 92 millimeter fan there at the top, a uh, heat fin design, a copper slug in the middle to provide adequate heat dissipation, and uh, four threaded and uh, spring-loaded screws there to securely mount that to your 2011 socket. Now, if you're going to be going with the 3960X processor over here, you might be looking to overclock, and you might be looking at some other cooling solutions uh, to enhance your overclocking experience. Intel also has produced this, which is the Intel RTS 2011 LC liquid cooling solution. Both of these coolers are sold separately by Intel, but both of them are totally compatible with the 2011 socket Sandy and Sandy Bridge E processors. Uh, both of the coolers feature four pin PWM controlled uh, fan plugs to plug into your motherboard's CPU header. And this is essentially a closed loop cooling solution. It has a copper block there to secure to the uh, CPU, the 2011 socket. And it has a 120 millimeter radiator right here with the, of course, 120 millimeter fan to connect to that in whatever co configuration you prefer to make sure that your uh, processor is adequately cooled. Now these closed loop water cooling solutions are particularly effective for 2011 Sandy Bridge E processors and that is because as I was showing you guys on the motherboard layout there, there's not a whole lot of room around the CPU socket. A closed loop water cooling solution will allow you to draw that uh, heat away from the CPU and dissipate it through the radiator, which will get a lot of that away from the sensitive components around the CPU socket. And that's going to wrap it up for today's video. Once again, this has been Intel's second generation Core i7 processors. We've been featuring the 3960X Extreme Edition and the 3930K. Both are fully unlocked and overclockable. Both will fit in socket 2011 motherboards, which currently feature the X X79 chipset. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. Hope you enjoyed this video. And if you'd like to see more, please head over to our Newegg YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe for more tech videos just like it. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.